Before we get into the Bucks game against the Eagles, let's take you to the locker room to show you what Devin White had to say after the contest. Just one game, but it's a, it was a big game. I want to beat them so bad, but I mean, at the end of the day, man, we'll, we'll see them again. We're in the same division. We're going to the playoffs. I'm saying that right now. So it is what it is. So keep that in mind. One of the leaders, one of the captains on this team is incredibly confident despite the 25-11 to 11 loss at Ray J last night. And for the next few minutes, we're going to take that confidence, put it on the back burner because we're about to rip the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a while. Let's go over the total yards. There was a huge difference. The Eagles had 472 total yards. The Bucs had 174. That was almost a 300-yard difference. That is ridiculous. Let's just be honest. That's ridiculous. You're not going to win any game allowing that many yards. By rushing, the Eagles had 12 first downs, over 200 rushing yards. The Bucs had one. We're going to talk about the rushing game of Tampa Bay in just a second. By passing, the Eagles had 13 first downs. The Bucs had 10. Both teams turned the ball over twice, but of course the difference is when the Bucs got turnovers, they turned the ball right back over to the Eagles, and they had a safety. That was pretty much the, the final pin right there, which that was a great play by Dee Delaney to make that interception near the goal line, but to give up a safety immediately, you're not going to win a game like that. So let's talk about the rushing attack of the Buccaneers, which after the game, Todd Bowles was asked, hey, what did you think of the rushing game? Todd Bowles said, we didn't have one. He's right. They didn't have one. Rashad White, 14 carries, 38 yards, an average of 12.7 yards per carry. His longest carry was 12 yards. So you take that away, horrible day on the ground. DeAndre Swift, other side of the coin for the Eagles, 130 yards on the ground. So that is back-to-back 100-yard games for the former Georgia Bulldog. Go dogs. Jalen Hurts passed for 277. Baker Mayfield passed for 146. Only thing of note there is if you got Mike Evans on your fantasy team, five catches, 60 yards, and a touchdown. Mike Evans is on my opponent's fantasy team, but I won that matchup. That's all I care about there. The biggest thing to me, though, here it is, time of possession. The way the Eagles controlled the football in the second half should be studied on all levels of football, high school, college, and pro. The Eagles had three drives in the second half of at least 10 plays. They started the second half with a 13-play, 75-yard touchdown drive, and then in the fourth quarter had a 10-play, 55-yard drive that led to a field goal. The Buccaneers got their garbage time touchdown to Mike Evans, two-point conversion to Chris Godwin, and then the Eagles held the ball for the final nine minutes and 22 seconds of the contest. They held the ball for nine minutes and 22 seconds to end the game. That is what possessing the football looks like. That is absolutely mastery of the art of killing the clock. I personally have not seen anything like that, and I don't think the Bucs have ever experienced anything like that. Imagine scoring with more than nine minutes left on the clock, and then you realize, oh, we're not going to get the ball back. It, it's, it sounds ridiculous, right? But that's what the Eagles were able to do. Offense, defense, special teams, the Eagles dominated. We just need to start faster. It's a Monday night game. We should be pumped up and ready to go, be aggressive as an offense. We're damn good when we can't, when we do our job. So uh, just need to take advantage of it. So what's next? Well, the Bucks have already moved on. They are going down to New Orleans, and y'all know how it gets when the Bucks go to New Orleans. Pettiness goes throughout the week. There's going to be a lot more aggression on the field. Bucks and Saints, it's turned into a pretty aggressive rivalry. But here's the thing. Derek Carr left the game on Sunday against the Packers with a shoulder injury. He's considered week to week. So it looks like Jameis Winston, the former Bucks quarterback, will be going up against his former team once again. Kickoff for that game is set at 1.